Hey YouTube, here's a cool little video. Electro-permanent magnets, what are they? Well, as the name would imply, they're an electromagnet, but they're also a permanent magnet. It's this neat little trick, and they're really two different uh, classes of electro-permanent magnets, and they're used more on an industrial scale. They're pretty expensive and hard to design, because magnets are a little bit black magic, but I needed some electro-permanent magnets for my own purposes. So I opted to machine and build some of my own instead of spending about $100 a piece. I maybe spent $25 a piece. So pretty big savings. All right, so electro-permanent magnets use a permanent magnet uh, in combination with an electromagnet. So this is my electro-permanent magnet. I've built a couple of them. Uh, underneath all of this epoxy that I've put on, there is a small ring magnet. It's a neodymium magnet that I've machined and bolted in to the pole of this electromagnet. I've actually mounted this on a rotary table in a chuck, milled out the entire pole, and embedded this magnet in here. What this means is that this magnet is always going to have a magnetic field present. When you want to turn off the magnet, you actually have to apply power to basically null out the magnetic field. So you can imagine if this is the north pole, and this is the south pole, and you have the electromagnet in reverse, when you apply just the right amount of current, the field strength of this um, neodymium magnet is counteracted by the electromagnet, thereby diminishing the magnetic field to the point where it releases the object that's being held. So, quick little demo time. I've got a one pound plate of steel held up by the magnet, right? It's reasonably held, um, unless I pull it off at an angle, but it, it's on there good enough for my purposes. Right? And this can stay here pretty much to the heat death of the universe. But if I apply, uh, in my case, about 22 volts, just like that. Pretty reliable. It's pretty fun to watch, actually. So these electromagnets are actually, oh, well, I guess the machine oil wore off the numbers on the. Uh, electromagnets, but these are rated for 12 volts. Um, I'm able to drive them a little bit harder because I'm only pulsing them for a short period of time. Usually with electromagnets, your limiting factor is the power dissipation. Because you have this potted in epoxy, the heat can't easily transfer out to the case of the magnet unless you spend a lot of time designing and engineering it just so. Now, you can't just take a permanent magnet and slap it on top of one of these solenoid magnets. What you have to do is ensure that you make sure the magnetic field lines on each side of this magnet don't have another short circuit path to go around. So originally there was an entire plate of metal up here that I machine out. If you just put a magnet up here, then the field lines will actually loop around through the piece of metal underneath and back up into another sheet of metal on top. In this case, once you put this magnet into the field lines of the pole on the face of this electromagnet, then the field lines have no choice but to go through, as well, the field of the electromagnet has no choice but to try and go through this magnet. So you can also think of a whole bunch of other scenarios too where you can drive it um, bidirectionally, apply higher power so that you grab the object first, then disengage, and then when you're ready to release, you apply power in reverse, and that de-energizes the magnet and drops the object. But quick little project, and it turned out fairly well. These are going to get integrated into a drop mechanism uh, for basically a stage show. But uh, regardless of that, um, the other class of electro-permanent magnet uses um, Alnico, aluminum nickel cobalt. And basically, th these are uh, magnetic materials that have a certain coercivity. So if you apply a magnetic field to Alnico, it will hold on to that magnetic field. So if you wind coils of wire around a piece of Alnico, pulse high current through a capacitor and a little boost circuit, um, you can actually pump in and increase the magnetic field. And once you have that magnetic field, it will stay there. There are a couple of examples out there. One of them is this... Uh, UAV drone lifting device where it has 
a small little boost circuit and some capacitors and it pulses the power through these coils of wire to pump up the magnetic charge so it can actually hold on to larger objects. And by doing so, you can passively hold the load without needing a huge electrical power source. So, electropermanent magnets, that's how they work. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment.